Hey everyone, this is Michael again, and welcome to the Monday Night Raw review. And Monday Night Raw tonight, you already know uh, what I gotta say about this show. I say it every single week. Show was awful tonight. Show was absolutely dreadful. And said it before, a whole lot of times, and I know I sound like a broken record uh, from saying every single week that this show sucks. Because it's, ap- because it's true. And I'll say it again. Monday Night Raw is one of the worst pro wrestling shows on cable television. And even that, I sound like a broken record every time I say it. It's because WWE, they don't care about making this show better. You know, all they care about is the money, and we all know that. You know, them uh, bringing in the money from their deals with NBC Universal with Fox, with the Peacock uh, money that they're making. That's all they care about. They don't care about giving Monday Night Raw a, a refresh or a restart, overhaul. They don't care about that. They don't care about uh, making the tag team division on both shows you know, better. And they don't care about making the women's division on both shows better. It's sad. It is absolutely sad. I had to bring out the Gatorade tonight. But what do we see on the show tonight? We saw, and I can't believe I gotta uh, say this, but tonight we saw the return of Eva Marie. My God. Eva Marie is back, and our nightmares have come true. I don't know what they're going to do with Eva Marie. I pray to God that she stays out of the ring. Because last time we saw Eva Marie compete in the ring, she was awful. She can't wrestle. She couldn't wrestle the last time that we saw her. Please, hope to God she stays out of the ring. And just becomes a manager. That's all I want to see. That's all I want WWE to do for Eva Marie. If she is competing in the ring again. Every time that she comes out for a match. I will take my bathroom break. Every time that she has a match. Because she is absolutely awful. In the ring. From the last time that we saw her. We had uh, AJ Styles and Omos back, you know, almost a month after they won the Raw Tag Team Championship at WrestleMania. So they ended up returning tonight. And they defend the titles against the New Day. We had uh, Angel Garza in a match tonight. Uh, When was the last time we saw Angel Garza in the ring? It's been quite a while. So Angel Garza was in the match against Drew Gulak, which was just, eh, in my opinion. We had uh, Mansoor, and you you all are probably like, who? Mansoor is the guy who uh, competed at the Saudi Arabia shows, you know, Crown Jewel and Super Showdown. He is now a part of Monday Night Raw. He's now a part of the Monday Night Raw roster. Uh, he was uh, having some matches in NXT, so he is now a part of uh, the Monday Night Raw roster. Of course, once again, we saw Nia Jackson, and Shayna Baszler versus Lana and Naomi. How many fucking times? How many fucking how many fucking times have we seen this match? And in the main event, we saw Bobby Lashley versus Drew McIntyre. <clears throat> So my Night Raw, like I said, awful show tonight. But anyways, let's get on with the uh, review. So my Night Raw opened up tonight, <clears throat> and we saw a video from uh, earlier in the day. This was on uh, WWE.com. So MVP was talking with uh, Sonya Deville and Adam Pierce. So... They were preparing to flip a coin 
to see if Bobby Lashley will face Drew McIntyre or Braun Strowman in the main event uh, later on tonight. So McIntyre then ended up walking in and he had some words uh, to say to MVP. Strowman ended up uh, also coming in. Strowman was taunting McIntyre. So he had an argument breakout between the both of them, between Strowman and uh, McIntyre. So Adam Pierce uh, ended up calming the both of them down. So Strowman ends up calling tails, you know, for the coin for the coin flip. So the coin ended up flipping, and tails it was. So Adam Pierce then confirmed it's going to be Braun Strowman versus Bobby Lashley later on uh, in the night, which was the main event. So Strowman ended up saying that he's given everyone a preview of WrestleMania Backlash. MVP then warned that once uh, Bobby Lashley puts Braun Strowman in the Hurt Lock, Strowman won't be making it to Backlash. So that was that. But this all main event was brought together just by a coin toss. So that was your main event uh, later on night. Bobby Lashley versus uh, Braun Strowman. So then uh, we went uh, to the ring. So we had a drum roll uh, that was played. Mike Rome ended up introducing Styles and Omos, which both of these guys have been off TV for almost a month since winning the titles at WrestleMania. So Styles ended up coming out. Omos was right behind him. So both Styles and Omos end up heading to the ring. So Styles was on the mic and he ended up saying, for those fans foolish enough to not tune into night one of WrestleMania, he would they all would have seen him and Omos become the new Raw Tag Team Champions. Styles ended up going on about that being Omos's first match, he wrecked the New Day, and he will likely wreck them again. So Styles then end up having a important question uh, to ask the fans. He was like, "Did you miss us?" I sure uh, missed, you know, seeing Styles on TV and Omos. So they they disappeared for. Uh, almost a month. They they ended up on a uh, milk car, and you could tell that they ended up on a milk car and with a wanted poster, you know, looking for them. So Styles ended up saying, "Of course you missed them. They are the Raw Tag Team Champions." Styles ended up saying that they've been partying and celebrating the title win off of the coast of Florida, and they went to the Caribbean. So Styles ended up saying that the trip was awesome and they had much bigger things to do than throw tomatoes like the New Day. And we all saw that last week, which was absolutely terrible, where the New Day and Damian Priest were throwing tomatoes at uh, Miz and Morrison and Elias and Jackson Riker. So Styles ended up going on about being a Grand Slam champion. You know, saying that it only took him five years, and that was pretty quick. You know, saying that they're here for one reason and one reason only. So Styles then got interrupted by New Day, by Kofi Kingston and Xavier Woods. So Xavier Woods and Kofi were on the stage. Kofi ended up saying that he wasn't sure if Styles and Omos even still worked here. And he ended up congratulating on them on some deserved time off. So Woods and Kofi end up mocking Styles and Omos for having no respect for the tag team division 
and them taking time off. So Kofi ended up saying that there's a reason that they're 11-time tag team champions. And that is because every time they get knocked down, they pick themselves up, dust themselves off, and get back in the ring to win their titles back every single time. Kofi ended up saying that Styles can take shots and jabs at their career if he wants to. He ended up saying that he goes on about being uh, a top singles champion because of uh, the New Day's influence. Kofi ended up saying taking time off is not how the New Day rolls. So Omos uh, had heard enough and he ended up saying that He's heard enough of these morons, and it seems like he didn't knock enough sense into them at WrestleMania, and that they won't be able to laugh or walk after he's done with Kofi and Xavier. Omos then told Xavier and Kofi to come to the ring and, you know, let's have this match. So Xavier Woods then interrupted, and he ended up going on about how they are about to become 12-time Raw Tag Team Champions. So, that was that. Overall, just a okay segment. You know, it was nice seeing Styles and Omos back, you know, after a month of them uh, not being on TV. So then we saw the New Day versus AJ Styles and Omos Raw Tag Team Championship match. This was an okay match here. So, Styles end up uh, starting off the match with Xavier Woods. Styles end up uh, tagging Omos in. And this was Omos's uh, in-ring debut on Monday Night Raw. So Xavier Woods was shown kicking at Omos a few times. Uh, the kicks did nothing to Omos. You know, he was just standing there. So Omos then took Xavier Woods, started ragdolling Xavier Woods. Omos then ended up punching Xavier Woods down to the mat, and then he launched him into the turnbuckles. So Omos then wanted Kofi to come into the ring. Kofi ended up tagging in. Kofi was delivering some kicks to Omos, and he was looking to mount some offense. Omos then ended up blocking a kick uh, from Kofi, ends up shoving him down to the mat. Kofi then got up, started running the ropes, he ended up uh, kicking Omos. Xavier Woods end up coming back in. Xavier and Kofi end up double teaming on Omos. But Omos end up coming back and delivered a double clothesline uh, to both uh, Woods and Kofi. Omos started working on Xavier Woods. Styles end up coming in and Xavier Ro Woods end up rolling uh, up Styles for a two count. Styles end up getting sent out to the floor. Xavier Woods uh, delivered a drop kick through the ropes as Kofi ended up uh, coming in. So Kofi uh, went to run the ropes. Omos was there, started staring uh, Kofi down. So Kofi ended up uh, leaping out to the floor, taking Styles back down at ringside. So at the end of the match, we had uh, Styles end up coming in. He ended up going to the top. Because Xavier Woods ended up kicking Omos. It did nothing. Omos ended up leveling Xavier Woods with a big boot. So that's when Styles ended up coming in. Went to the top. Styles ended up leaping over Omos's shoulders. And he delivered the phenomenal forearm to Xavier Woods. Styles went for the cover. And there you go. Styles and Omos end up winning the match retaining the Raw Tag Team Championship. Overall, it was an okay match. So then we saw Charlotte Flair. Charlotte was backstage with Sonya Deville. Sonya ended up saying that she will take Charlotte's concerns into consideration. Anna Pierce then walked in. Charlotte was walking out of the room. Anna Pierce ended up asking what that was all about. Sonya ended up saying to Adam Pierce that, you know, it was nothing. Pierce then ended up telling Sonya Deville that he wants to get one, one thing straight. He ended up saying that he appreciates Sonya, but she has been overstepping 
her boundaries as of late. So, Sonya Deville, she's on my eye raw when she is on SmackDown, you know, with Adam Pearce. And there's no explanation as to why she came to Raw only to reinstate, you know, Charlotte after Charlotte uh, was suspended for only one week because she uh, kicked a referee. Why is Sonya Deville still here? Uh, And then we get the vignette with Eva Marie. I can't believe it. I can't believe that she's back. So Eva Marie ended up saying this in this vignette that she is coming back to where she all started. Why? By getting back into the ring and sucking again? Hopefully that's not the case. She ended up saying that she wants to help others achieve their dreams. And we saw her say the evolution is coming soon. More like the Eva Borlution is coming soon. I don't know why Eva Marie is back. Hopefully, like I said uh, earlier, that WWE ends up making her a manager. She manages a woman a superstar on Monday Night Raw. And hopefully she doesn't get back into the ring. Like I said earlier, if WWE makes Eva Marie get back into the ring and have matches, it will be my bathroom break every single week. And the thing that makes me pissed off is WWE. They fire Samoa Joe. They fire Chelsea Green. They fire the Iconics, Payne Royce and Billy Kay. They fire Mickey James. But yet, you bring back Eva Marie. It is unbelievable. It's awful. It's absolutely awful. Yeah, and WWE has found a way to make My Night Raw even more worse by having Eva Marie on the show. What a joke. What a fucking joke. So then we saw MVP and Bobby Lashley backstage with Caleb Braxton. MVP ended up Uh, saying to Caleb Braxton about how Braun Strowman's luck ran out with the coin toss earlier and that he should consider himself lucky or unlucky to be in the ring with the almighty Bobby Lashley. MVP also went to praise uh, for Strowman and McIntyre. Lashley ended up interrupting MVP and he ended up saying about how he's not losing the WWE Championship to either Braun Strowman or Drew McIntyre. So that was that. And then we went to Elias and Jackson Riker backstage. Elias and Jackson Riker were trying to get revenge on the New Day and end up throwing tomatoes. So I'm like, yeah, let's take the script that we saw last week and just rehash it this week. Except minus Damian Priest and the New Day. So Elias and Jackson Riker, they were throwing tomatoes, and Randy Orton is there. Elias and Jackson Riker end up throwing the tomatoes at Randy Orton. So Matt Riddle was shown riding on his scooter. He does, he ends up saying, you know, hi to Orton. Orton ended up wiping tomatoes off of him. Awful. God awful. Same shit that we saw last week. Minus Damian Priest and The New Day. And minus The Miz and John Morrison. 
Now we got Charlotte Flair versus Dana Brooke. Boring. Charlotte Flair ended up winning. Charlotte ended up applying the figure four, bridged it into the figure eight. And that was that. Charlotte ended up winning. When you saw Dana Brooke come out, you're like, oh, yeah, Charlotte's winning. So post-match, Charlotte was refusing to break the figure eight. Mandy Rose ended up coming in. Mandy Rose decked uh, Charlotte. Mandy Rose then delivered a running kick, which sent Charlotte out of the ring. So Sonya Deville ended up coming out. Sonya Deville made her way into the ring. And Money Night Raw went to commercial. So when Money Night Raw came back from the commercial, uh, Charlotte and Sonya Deville uh, were in the ring. Sonya Deville ended up saying that she is allowing Charlotte to make a proposal. Deville went on to say that Charlotte was taken aback by how she was left out of the World Women's Championship match at WrestleMania Backlash. And Charlotte ended up saying that she wants to be added to the match at WrestleMania Backlash with Asuka versus Rhea Ripley. Charlotte went on about putting Rhea Ripley on the map last year and by having Asuka take her opportunity. Charlotte ended up thanking Sonya Deville for reinstating her, but she should be added to the match. So Charlotte ended up making her proposal, her case, and up saying uh, adding her to the match would be a bigger deal. So what for what? So the title could go back on you? Like I say, WWE, if they have Charlotte win the title, which I know that they probably will, they give Charlotte everything just because she's a flair. So Sonya Deville ended up uh, going to turn and get out of the ring. Charlotte ended up saying that she's not done with her. Charlotte went on to say that Rhea Ripley and Asuka can only take the division so far. But if she is added to the match, she makes it that much more important. No, you don't. No, you don't. You don't make the match more important. So Charlotte ended up going on about being the original influence in the company and the most famous face. More like all that, overrated. Because Charlotte is overrated. So Charlotte ended up going on, making her case. She was telling Sonya Deville to do the right thing and be fair to her. Sonya Deville ended up saying that Charlotte made a good case and she ended up saying since the men get to have their triple threat, she is adding Charlotte to the match at WrestleMania Backlash. So it's going to be a triple threat. Charlotte versus Asuka versus Rhea Ripley at Backlash for the Royal Women's Championship. Great. Just fucking great. Makes the match even more worse. So then we had Rhea Ripley end up coming out. Rhea Ripley end up saying that this is absolute crap. I agree with you, Rhea. Rightfully agree. She ended up saying that there's a reason Charlotte wasn't in the match at WrestleMania. And it's the same reason that no one wants to see her in this match. Because nobody likes her. Rhea Ripley... Ended up uh, talking. She kept on talking. She ended up coming into the ring. Rhea Ripley ended up accusing Sonya Deville of working her own plan. So then out came Asuka. Asuka comes out, does her flaps with the arms. So Asuka ended up calling this crap. (laughs) I I agree with you on that. So Asuka ended up uh, taunting Charlotte for being a crybaby. Yeah, and it sounded like Charlotte was coming off as a crybaby in this segment. So Asuka ended up yelling uh, some more. Charlotte ended up knocking them on the mic. And Charlotte ended up saying that she promises to leave WrestleMania Backlash as the Raw Women's Champion. 
Rhea Ripley ended up stepping to Sonya Deville, started yelling in Sonya Deville's face. Charlotte ended up dropping Rhea Ripley from behind. Asuka ended up attacking Charlotte and sent her out to the floor. And that was pretty much that. So, but this whole segment was absolutely dreadful. Charlotte is nauseating on the mic here. Awful. So, yeah, we got to have Charlotte in this match now. Yeah, you all thought that Charlotte was going to sit out another pay-per-view, right? Wrong. Charlotte isn't, wasn't going to sit out of another pay-per-view. Makes the match even more worse with Charlotte being added to it. It's like I say, WWE, they give this woman anything. And she doesn't need to have an opportunity. They're like, oh, here you go, Charlotte. Yeah, you're not going to get, you know, no opportunities. Just add yourself into the match. It, it's sick. So then we saw Kayla Braxton backstage with Humberto Carrillo. So we saw, you know, a recap of what Sheamus has done to Humberto Carrillo for the past two weeks, where Sheamus was just being the hell out of him. Humberto ended up saying that Sheamus has been bullying everyone just because he thinks he can. He ended up saying that he knows how it feels to be bullied. And he won't let Seamus disrespect him. Humberto ended up going on about answering all of Seamus' open challenges. So then Seamus ended up suddenly attacking Humberto Correa from behind. Started beating him down backstage. Seamus ended up laying Humberto Correa out. And he was joking that he won't be in any condition to answer the open challenge. But there's always next week. So Seamus uh, left, and then he ended up walking off. Humberto Carrillo was trying to recover after the, after the attack from Seamus. So that was that. So then when Monday Night Raw came back from the commercial, we saw Adam Pierce end up stopping Sonya Deville in the back. And Adam Pierce was not happy with her. Adam Pierce ended up accusing Sonya Deville of abusing her power and he ended up asking if he needs to go to a higher authority over her recent actions. So Sonya Deville ended up blaming it all on bad reception and actually tried to send Adam Pierce a text message. So Adam Pierce was like, we share an office together. So he ended up dismissing the idea of Sonya Deville sending a uh, her sending him a text message. Sonya Deville ended up telling Adam Pierce that she had to make an urgent decision and that that urgent decision couldn't have waited. She wanted to say that Adam Pierce is right and that they should be making these decisions together. So we saw Adam Pierce and Sonya Deville, they both ended up facing off and that was that. And then we saw The Miz and John Morrison in the ring. Of course, The Miz has to be there because Miz and Mrs. Uh, is on after Monday Night Raw. So, you know, The Miz has to get his ratings up for the show uh, every single week. So, they were in the ring. Uh, they were not happy with The New Day and Damian Priest attacking them last week with Tomatoes. Miz ended up ranting about his accomplishments. He ended up saying that Damien Priest has left them no choice. So, John Morrison uh, was on the mic. He was ranting about his dripness. And then, uh, lights end up going out. Damien Priest ended up making his way to the ring. So, we had a uh, promo, a pre-recorded promo from Damien Priest where he ended up, where he ended up talking about being from New York City, where The Miz wouldn't even last. And he ended up saying that he will break The Miz's jaw. So that was what Damien Priest had to say in that 
uh, pre-recorded promo. So we had uh, John Morrison uh, versus Damian Priest. Boring match. We had Damian Priest uh, win the match where we had, at one point, the Miz end up distracting uh, Damian Priest, which allowed John Morrison to hit the Spanish fly from the corner on Damian Priest. Uh, John Morrison went for the cover, which Priest ended up kicking out at two. The Miz, once again, uh, caused a distraction. The Miz ended up distracting the referee from the apron. So Priest ended up coming back, ended up hitting the bell clap, and the hit the lights on John Morrison. Damian Priest went for the cover. And there you go. Damian Priest ended up winning the match. Overall, boring match, in my opinion. And thank God they did not even mention about Bad Bunny. Because why the hell would they still mention Bad Bunny? Just boring match, in my opinion. So then we saw Adam Pierce. He was backstage with Mansoor. Mansoor ended up signing the contract. And Adam Pierce officially welcomed Mansoor to Monday Night Raw, which uh, he's now part of the Monday Night Raw roster. Uh, Mansoor, guy competed in uh, Saudi Arabia at the Saudi Arabia shows, you know, Crown Jewel and Super Showdown. He also had a few matches in uh, NXT. So, Sheamus walked in. Sheamus was talking about what happened to Humberto Carrillo. So, Sheamus was taking uh, shots at Mansoor. And he informs Mansoor that he is now on Monday Night Raw. Sheamus ended up mentioning Mansoor challenging him for the United States Championship. And taking a bro kick so the fans can get to know him. Sheamus ended up taunting Mansoor, and he walked off. Mansoor then talked to Adam Pearce about how some things haven't changed here, and he didn't expect it to happen so quick. And so Adam Pearce ended up telling Mansoor for him to get used to it. Of course, we got to get used to it. So there you go, Mansoor, now part of Monday Night Raw. As I say, WWE is going to use Mansoor on my Raw. I give him two weeks. I give Mansoor two weeks until he's in catering. Two weeks I give him. And the guy is talented. Mansoor, you look at the matches that he had at a Crown Jewel, and he competed in Super Showdown. The guy's talented uh, in the ring. And then we saw MVP backstage with Kayla Braxton. MVP ended up talking about Bobby Lashley taking care of both Braun Strowman and Drew McIntyre. So that was all what he had to say to Kayla Braxton. And then we saw the Lucha House Party. Grand Metalik and let's say Dorado versus... Cedric Alexandra and Sean Benjamin. Did not even care for this match. Lucha House Party ended up winning. Grand Metalik uh, ended up walking the top rope, delivered a flying elbow drop down onto Sean Benjamin. And there you go. The Lucha House Party ended up winning the match. Post match, Cedric Alexandra ended up taking the mic, and he was yelling at Sean Benjamin about how they've gone from the Hurt Business to this, to them just being uh, a tag team together. Cedric ended up saying that uh, really Sean Benjamin was kicked from uh, the Hurt Business, not both of them, because Sh Sh uh, Cedric ended up saying that Shelton was the weak link of the Hurt Business. He then went on about how Sean Benjamin has received numerous opportunities, and he doesn't have long 
left in his career. Cedric went on to say that he's in his prime and he refuses to give any more time to Shelton Benjamin. Cedric went on to say that just like Shelton Benjamin, this team is done. So there you go. Cedric Alexander and Shelton Benjamin no longer a tag team. So what does that do for the both of them? They're going right back to catering. Both of them are going back to catering. So, am I surprised? No. This is why WWE should not have broken up uh, them as the Hurt Business. It's why they shouldn't have gotten rid of Cedric Alexander and Shawn Benjamin. Because with that, when they were in the Hurt Business, look, look at how they were. MVP ended up uh, getting Shawn Benjamin uh, back on TV every week. You know, he... Look what uh, he did to Cedric Alexandra. You know, MVP was the guy that got Cedric Alexandra and Sean Benjamin to appear every single week and have matches. He uh, revitalized their careers. You know, after Cedric Alexandra uh, was not doing anything, Sean Benjamin uh, not being used on TV a whole lot, Look at what happened when MVP came into the picture. And he got Cedric Alexandra and Shell Benjamin. And put them both together with Bobby Lashley. The Hurt Business uh, was working. Until Vince was like, oh yeah, I don't like it. You know, let's break up the Hurt Business. That's a smart decision. No, it's not. WWE fucked up in breaking up the Hurt Business. So it's just MVP and Bobby Lashley. Huge mistake of eliminating Cedric Alexandra and Shelton Benjamin. So now they go back to catering. So then we saw Angel Garza backstage. Angel Garza was shown uh, walking with a rose. Drew Gulak ended up yelling at Garza. Gulak was taunting Garza for him being a ladies' man who can't even score. So Drew Gulak then challenged Angel Garza to a match. He then mentions to Garza that it will be him smelling the roses when he wins. So Garza ended up saying that Drew Gulak will smell the rose either way. Because after he beats him, he's shoving that rose up Gulak's ass. So, that was that. And then we saw Kayla Braxton uh, backstage with Shelton Benjamin. She was asking Shelton Benjamin about the words that we just heard from Cedric Alexandra. Shelton Benjamin ended up saying that he's survived in this business for so long because he can take the hit. Sean went on to say that he's seen so many stars come and go, like Cedric. He understands that the only reason Cedric uh, Alexander was in the Hurt Business was because he saw potential in him, not MVP or Bobby Lashley. Uh, I think MVP uh, was the one who saw potential in Cedric Alexander. Sean ended up saying that Cedric can do whatever he wants, but he will respect uh, him. Sheldon ended up going on and I'm saying that he let Cedric say his piece out there. But if he's not careful, he will be another young star fizzling out why he continues to survive, why Sheldon continues to survive. So that was what Sheldon had to say. So then we saw Angel Garza versus Drew Gulak. Quick match. We had Angel Garza end up winning. Garza ended up uh, bringing Gulak into the middle of the ring, end up nailing the wing clipper on Gulak. So there you go. Garza ended up winning the match, but you know it was nice seeing Angel Garza back in the ring. You know it's been a while uh, since you know we saw him compete. So post match, Garza ended up grabbing the rose from the apron, and he ended up asking Drew Gulak 
if he wants to smell the rose. Garzadan taunted uh, Gulak with the rose, ended up placing the rose uh, in the rear of Gulak's trunks. Garza ended up uh, backing up and then nailed uh, Drew Gulak with a running kick. So that was that. So then we saw Matt Riddle end up stopping the Viking Raiders uh, in the back. And Riddle end up seeing Randy Orton. He ended up uh, riding off on a scooter. Orton ended up telling Matt Riddle that they are not bros. And that Orton is all serious. Matt Riddle ended up talking about it being an honor to team with him. Point to how they're still undefeated as RK Bro. Orton ended up saying that they have just one match. So Orton then turned back to Matt Riddle, ended up asking him if he wants to go out to the ring and win another match. Matt Riddle was ranting about his plans for the team. Orton ended up uh, hushing him and tells him to zip it. Orton ended up walking off. Matt Riddle was shown uh, riding a scooter ahead of him. So, that was that. Now we had Randy Orton and Matt Riddle versus Elias and Jackson Riker. Match was just meh, in my opinion. So, Elias ended up starting off the match with Randy Orton. Orton ended up uh, kicking Elias, ended up taking him into the corner. Orton started unloading in the corner on Elias with kicks and uh, right hands. So Elias ended up tagging in Jackson Riker. Riker ended up beating Orton up in the corner. Orton delivered a thumb to the eye uh, to Jackson Riker, and the referee wasn't even looking. Matt Rowe ended up coming in, started kicking uh, Jackson Riker. Orton was still holding on to uh, Jackson Riker. Riker ended up blocking a uh, modified armbar from Matt Riddle. He slammed Matt Riddle in the middle of the ring. Matt Riddle got up, started fighting back, and did the bro mission on Jackson Riker. Elias came in, and him and Jackson Riker ended up double teaming on Matt Riddle. So, at the end of the match, Orin ended up coming in, and... Uh, he then ended up in a uh, second rope drape in DDT on Elias. Jackson Riker ended up coming from behind. Orin ended up leveling uh, Jackson Riker with the RKO. And Matt Riddle then ended up hitting the floating bro onto Elias uh, for the win. So there you go. Randy Orin and Matt Riddle end up winning the match. RK bro. They are now 2-0. So, that was that. But overall, just a very meh match. I mean, Orin and Matt Riddle, they're not a legit tag team. I mean, how many... So, we saw uh, Sheamus end up slamming Mansoor over the top of the barricade. He ended up putting uh, Mansoor in the timekeeper's area. Sheamus ended up coming back into the ring as the referee made uh, the, his count. Mansoor ended up uh, making it back into the ring as the referee ended up counting to nine. Sheamus couldn't believe it. So Mansoor ended up fighting Sheamus off with you know, a bunch of elbows. Sheamus ended up countering and ended up getting drop kicked into the turnbuckles by Mansoor. Mansoor ended up delivering another drop kick and delivered a tornado DDT from the corner. And Sheamus was down. Mansoor ended up going for the cover, which Sheamus ended up kicking out too. So Sheamus uh, got back up. Sheamus delivered the white noise on Mansoor to keep control of the match. And Sheamus was ready to go for the bro kick. Uh, he was in the corner, getting ready to uh, hit the bro kick on Mansoor. But Humberto Carrillo ended up attacking Sheamus out of nowhere. So the match ended the disqualification. Sheamus 
uh, won the match by disqualification. So Humberto Carrillo was alone on Sheamus and up sent him out of the ring. Humberto ended up nailing a big dive uh, to Sheamus. Sheamus came back, started fighting back, and he ended up returning to the ring. He ended up hitting the bro kick on Humberto Carrillo. Sheamus then ended up turning to Mansoor, and Sheamus then leveled uh, Mansoor with the bro kick. So Sheamus uh, was shown uh, bleeding a little bit uh, from his forehead. Sheamus then ended up raising the United States Championship uh, in the air. And that was that. But overall, I thought this was, you know, not bad of a match. You know, Mansoor, he's entertaining in the ring. So, but it was not bad. So then we had Alexis Playground. Alexa Bliss, of course, was shown on a swing with Lily. Alexa Bliss ended up saying that Lily is a big fan and had so much fun getting to see some of her favorite superstars up close. Alexa Bliss ended up saying that Lily loves playing hide and seek, but she always finds her in peculiar positions and has gotten her hands dirty at times. Alexa Bliss wants to say that Lily's favorite color is red. And wherever she goes, trouble seems to follow. So Lily was shown whispering something to Alexa Bliss. Alexa Bliss ended up saying that she can't tell us who uh, who that is. And that's their dirty little secret because she ended up saying that a certain someone may have caught her beady little eyes. Alexa Bliss ended up saying that, you know, like she told us before, don't blame her for what happens next. So Alexa Bliss was shown asking Lily what she made her do and how the world goes crazy at the sight of you. She ended up saying, we have so much fun together and we'll be friends forever. So she was like, Lily, what do you make me do? So Lex Bliss was shown uh, smiling. And of course, the segment ends with the close-up of Lily. Smiles. Snar she ends up snarling at the camera. And that was that. So I don't know where they're taking uh, Alexa Bliss here uh, with uh, Lily. Don't even know where this is going. But like I said, Alexa Bliss is the only uh, decent uh, part of My Night Raw with her Alexa, where her Alexa's playground. But we'll want to see where uh, WWE is uh, going to take this with Alexa Bliss and uh, her uh, doll Lily. And then we had Lana and Naomi versus Shayna Baszler and Nia Jax. Women's tag team titles on the line. Oh, let me play it. Let me play it here. This was uh, what I thought of the match. Here we go. There you go. Every single week, matches with Lana and Naomi, with Nia Jax and Shayna Baszler. It's like every single week. It's like on SmackDown, Tamina and Natalia every single week. Enough is enough. How many times have we seen Nia Jax and Shayna Baszler face Lana and Naomi on My Night Raw and also face Tamina and Natalia on SmackDown? Awful. It is absolutely awful. Shayna Baszler and Nia Jax win the match and retain the women's tag team titles. And we had uh, Reginald interfering. Yes, Reginald was out there. So uh, Shayna Baszler ended up applying the, the care for the clutch on Lana. That was that. The match was sloppy. 
match was sloppy and boring. So MVP was backstage with Bobby Lashley. MVP was shown hyping up Bobby Lashley going into the uh, the main event, which was uh, next. So main event, Bobby Lashley versus Braun Strowman. Non-title match. So we had Bobby Lashley end up making his way out along with MVP. My Night Raw went to commercial. Then when My Night Raw came back from the commercial, Braun Strowman ended up coming out. Match started off with both Strowman and Bobby Lashley locking up in the corner. Referee ended up backing Lashley off. Lashley ended up delivering a thrust to uh, Strowman's gut. Strowman ended up smashing uh, Bobby Lashley back into the corner. Started delivering back elbows. Lashley was uh, fighting out. Lashley ended up delivering a big shoulder uh, to Strowman. And it did nothing to Strowman. Strowman ended up staring at Bobby Lashley, started charging, but Lashley ended up ducking. And he then uh, dropped uh, Strowman with a swing and neck breaker. So Strowman ended up going for the run and power slam later on, but Lashley ended up countering it. Strowman ended up sending Lashley over the top rope out to the floor. Lashley ended up getting back on the apron, but Strowman ended up knocking uh, Lashley off of it. Strowman ended up bringing Lashley back in, ended up delivering a run and splash in the corner on uh, Bobby Lashley. So we had uh, Strowman end up avoiding a hurt lock uh, from uh, Bobby Lashley. Uh, we had Drew McIntyre end up coming out. Strowman ended up dropping Bobby Lashley Ended up getting out of the ring. And Strowman was staring at Drew McIntyre. Lashley then attacked uh, Strowman from behind. Ended up dropping Strowman at ringside. Lashley ended up approaching uh, McIntyre. And he ended up offering his fist for McIntyre to bump out of respect. But McIntyre was just uh, staring at uh, Lashley. So, My Night Raw went to commercial. Then when My Night Raw came back from commercial, we saw Strowman uh, was fighting Bobby Lashley. McIntyre was uh, on commentary for the match uh, right here. So, Lashley was uh, shown dropping Strowman for a close two count. Lashley ended up uh, delivering uh, boots to Braun Strowman in the corner. Lashley ended up uh, just... You know, hitting Strowman with forearms. Lashley then uh, sent Strowman headfirst into the ring post, which uh, Strowman ended up uh, hitting the ring post hard. So Lashley took control of the match. He was continuing to dominate on Braun Strowman. So we had MVP and McIntyre. They were having some words at ringside. And... Lashley, later on, ended up rolling out to the floor to regroup an MVP. Strowman ended up running around the ring. Lashley sidestepped, and uh, he ended up shoving Strowman into McIntyre. So Strowman ended up running into McIntyre as Lashley ended up sidestepping. McIntyre and Strowman then got into it. They were arguing. Strowman ended up returning to the ring. McIntyre was arguing with uh, Strowman from uh, the apron. And Lashley ended up taking control of the match. He ended up uh, delivering a spear to Strowman. So Lashley then ended up covering Strowman. And there you go. Bobby Lashley ended up winning the match. Post-match, McIntyre ended up coming into the ring. And he ended up leveling Bobby Lashley with the Claymore. McIntyre uh, backed into the corner, and he ended up delivering a second Claymore to uh, Braun Strowman, which Braun Strowman ended up botching uh, the Claymore, where right when McIntyre uh, was going to hit the Claymore, you know how McIntyre always does the three, two, one. After 
you know, he counted out to one, he ran, and then Braun Strowman just lying on his back, botching the Claymore kick uh, from uh, Drew McIntyre. So, Corey Graves then uh, revealed that Adam Pearce made a match official. So next week on Monday Night Raw, it's going to be Bobby Lashley versus Drew McIntyre. It's going to be a non-title match on Monday Night Raw next week. And that was how Monday Night Raw uh, ended tonight. But overall, this match was just meh, in my opinion. Overall, Monday Night Raw, terrible show, as always. But anyways, that's it for my review of tonight's Monday Night Raw. Thank you all for watching. Hope you all enjoyed this review. Definitely give the video a thumbs up, comment, subscribe, and I will see you guys Wednesday night for AEW Dynamite. Of course, looking forward to it. Blood and Guts match taking place. That's going to be an awesome match. Probably the best match of the night on Dynamite on Wednesday. So I can't wait for it. So see you all Wednesday night for Dynamite.